All right, let's do this. Um, it's late, 11.15, 11.30 or so. I uh, just got back from work filming Black Adam. Uh, we've been having very productive, phenomenal days on Black Adam. I will update you on all things Black Adam this week. Um, but to switch gears, I want to talk just a little bit about Young Rock. Uh, Young Rock, of course, as you guys know, is our NBC show on every Tuesday night. Episode air tonight. As a matter of fact, if you're on the West Coast right now, um, it's airing now. So I hope you're enjoying the show. Uh, but judging by everybody's feedback, and it has been so incredibly gratifying, um, this episode in particular, um, I just wanted to check in with you guys and I wanted to say thank you so much. It's so gratifying to, uh, to read, uh, all of your responses, uh, from tonight's episode. Tonight's episode was special. Tonight's episode took place back in 19, um, 87. So we were evicted off the island uh, of Hawaii. Uh, so when we were kicked off the island, I was forced to go to Nashville, Tennessee. When I was in Nashville, Tennessee, um, I had no place to live. So I wound up uh, living with a guy by the name of Bruno Lauer, who many of you uh, wrestling fans know him as manager extraordinaire Harvey Whippleman. Uh, <laughs> you're like, what? Crazy history. So I had no place to live, so I wound up living with uh, with Bruno in a little motel room. Anyway, I lived there for a little while, and um, we all, uh, myself, my dad, and my mom, we um, we were forced to leave Nashville for a story I'll share down the road. And we settled in Bethlehem, Pennsylvania. Now, in Bethlehem, Pennsylvania, when I got to Bethlehem, Pennsylvania, as, as many of you guys know, because you've just watched the episode tonight, uh, I got to Freedom High School. I was 15 years old. I was already six foot four, full mustache, 225 pounds. Love working out every day. Um, and everyone thought, of course, there, uh, that I was an undercover cop. True story. Everyone thought I was an undercover cop in, in Nashville. And when I got to Bethlehem, everybody thought I was an undercover cop too. Um, but what you saw tonight in tonight's episode, um, you know how sometimes in life a, a, a moment happens that's so defining that actually changes the course of your life. And when you look back on something and you go, you know, if that thing hadn't happened, I wouldn't be the person that I am today. So when I got to Freedom High School, I already had a chip on my shoulder. I had already been suspended for fighting. Um, I had already been arrested within the first month of getting to Bethlehem. I was using, I had to go to the bathroom. I had to go pee. And I said, well, I'm not going to use the regular student uh, bathroom because it smelled of smoke and it was just disgusting. So this is my first or second week in Freedom High School. I went to use the teacher's lounge, uh, their bathroom, because, well, it's super clean. Uh, so I went in there and I used the bathroom. So in comes one of our teachers, who's also one of our football coaches. His name was Jody Swick. He comes in and he goes, and he was a badass. He goes, Hey, what are you doing in here? And I went I'm using the bathroom and he goes, you can't be in here. Get out of here. And I looked at him now again, I'm 15. Um, and I'm new in the school, new in the area. And everyone knew that I was not an undercover cop by this point because I had already been in trouble. I'd been suspended for fighting. He goes, you can't be in here. Get out of here. And I looked at him and I said, um, uh, I'll, I'll leave when I'm done. And I continued to wash my hands. He got so pissed. He said, you get the fuck out of here now. I'm sorry for cussing. He banged the wall. He had a real temper. I kept it cool. I continued to wash my hands and I just looked at him. I was <laughs> dried my hands off. Now he's steaming. As I walk by him, I give him a little brush. I was, <laughs> I give him a little brush. He's so pissed and I keep walking. Now, later on that night, uh, I realized that, wow, you know, I am, um, I felt really bad about what I did because I felt like it was a really poor representation of actually who I felt I was. And I just wasn't that kid. I wasn't, I, I, even though I acted like that, and even though I had gotten in a lot of trouble and was arrested multiple times in Hawaii and for getting in trouble and things like that, I, um, 
I felt really bad. So the next day I went to find him and I went to his classroom and, um, and I said, uh, I said, Hey, can I talk to you? And he was still pissed. He came out. He said, what? I said, I just want you to know that I'm sorry for how I acted yesterday. Uh, I said, I was a real asshole and I just want you to know I'm sorry. And, um, that's it. And I extended my hand. Now the kid, the door is open and I'm talking to him in the doorway and the, the other students are just watching. Everybody's watching. And, um, he looked at me and he looked at my hand. Now I keep my, I have my hand out. I didn't move it. And he looked at my hand and looked at me, looked at my hand and he left me hanging. But then he shook my hand and when he shook my hand, he said, thank you. And he was a real, like a real gruff guy. He goes, thank you. He shook my hand and he was really shaking the shit out of my hand. <laughs> I'll never forget it. He was shaking my hand hard and I went to pull away and he held on to it. And I was like, shit. I think he's going to swing on me right now. Like, <laughs> I think I got one coming. I got the receipt coming right now. Here it goes. I was like, I earned this one. I thought I was going to get decked. He held my hand. These words that he said to me completely changed my life. He said, hey, I want you to come out and play football for me. And I did not expect him to say that to the last thing. I thought I was going to get hit. I thought I was going to get decked. I said, what? He goes, I want you to come out and play football for me. And I didn't even think twice. I said, okay. And that was it. And then we had a couple of conversations uh, after that. And he goes, look, I just feel like you have some potential. I have never even seen you play. I don't know if you can play. You may fucking suck. <laughs> I don't know. He said, but... You got some potential. And, but the point is, and I, this thing is going on way too long. It's going to be eight minutes of your life. You're never going to get back. The point is in that moment of, of somebody seeing potential in me, when I certainly didn't see the potential in myself, um, that changed my life because that set me on a path. First of all, it got me off the wrong tracks of getting in trouble, but it also set me on a path where it enabled me to be focused on something and be focused on a goal because he was always adamant. He always said, listen, you can't afford to go to college. You could be the first one in your family, not only to go to college, but the first one to get a full scholarship. He goes, there's going to be a lot of schools up here, Penn State, Pitt, you name it, all in this area. They're all going to want to come and see you play. Uh, I got lucky enough. It just so happened that colleges across the country uh, thought that I had a little bit of potential. So they all recruited me. And then, of course, I wound up at the University of Miami, the U, best school in the country. Um, but the bottom line is, is that guy changed my life because he gave me a second chance and he believed in me uh, as a punk kid. I had no business getting a second chance from him. I was a complete asshole to him. But he saw past that and for whatever reason, and I think it was he saw my potential uh, through my apology. And so he did give me a second chance. So I believe in second chances. You saw it tonight in tonight's episode and you see how him giving me a second chance changed my life. Uh, I went to the University of Miami and the rest is, as you guys know, history. So thank you for watching, Young Rock. Thank you, thank you, thank you for all the amazing comments and all the amazing feedback, especially tonight for tonight's episode to the Swick family. Uh, my coach, Jody Swick, he's no longer here. He's walking in the clouds. Uh, he passed away some time ago, but he was always proud. And he was always my biggest fan. And, I'll, and I was always grateful. And I will always forever be grateful for him holding on to my hand and not letting it go and then seeing my potential. So I'm going to pour a on a toast, of course, to Coach Swick, who is watching now from the heavens. He's like, you're goddamn right I'm watching. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Coach Swick, for seeing the potential in me and for giving me a second chance. And one cool thing, and I know this is going on 10 minutes and I got to get to bed. I'm keeping you guys way too long. Is the dude who I was forced to live with when I had no place to live in Nashville, Bruno Lauer, <laughs> Harvey Whippleman, known to the wrestling world. He had a cameo in tonight's episode. 
he was the one who went, go Eagles! And, <laughs> and he made his big debut. Uh, so this one is to Bruno too, man. He took me in when I didn't have a place to live. Uh, and that always meant something to me, which is why we're very close friends today. So Bruno, thank you. Uh, and of course to Coach Swick, thank you for giving me a second chance. I love you, brother. Thank you. All right, guys. Thank you for enjoying Young Rock. And thank you for making NBC's biggest comedy this year. It's awesome. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Cheers. All right. Well, I got a half a bottle of Terramana. I, I'm probably going to be in the next couple of hours. All right. <laughs> Cheers.